Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a lot of information we'd like to cover, and we want to be respectful of your time. So let me get right into things here. Uh, so if you feel like you're doing a pretty good job of marketing your firm but aren't getting the leads and signing the cases that you want to from the web, it could be that the law firm down the street is outperforming you uh, on some critical aspects of your online marketing. We're going to discuss four key aspects uh, of web marketing for law firms today and some of the reasons that your competition might be better positioned to get cases from the web, uh, cases that your firm would like to be signing. Uh, if you're able to do these things better than the other firms, uh, perhaps you can get the upper hand. So today we're going to plan to cover uh, content, a few things about content, the mobile experience, uh, local search optimization, and also conversion rate optimization, which uh, we use shorthand CRO. So please keep in mind that these are just some of the elements of a successful online marketing campaign. We actually have a free PDF download available at the end of this webinar which is a self-assessment tool to help you gauge what and how your firm is doing with regards to your online marketing efforts. Uh, it includes topics in a large number of key areas, uh, way over and above the things that we're going to be discussing today. So the first topic for our discussion is content. Uh, does your competition have higher quality content or more compelling resources than your firm does on its website? Mike Dayton is a, a, uh, a valuable member of our team. He is our manager of content services, and he is a licensed attorney with the better part of three decades of experience in journalism, writing, editing, publishing, and in general covering legal topics. Uh, you can see here he's telling us that deeper content is being rewarded by Google, uh, and they're doing that in the way of better search engine rankings. Uh, we all know that Google has gained the vast majority of market share for search volume, and they've done that by returning more useful results to users over time. Uh, these deep pages that Mike is talking about are great for search engine rankings, but also for user experience, which is, is very, very key. User experience and rankings sort of play off of each other. Uh, the better a page is, uh, the more time users will spend on it. And Google, of course, knows how much time they're spending on it and is more apt to return that page for people who are searching for similar things in the future. So one way to organize all of this more substantive content is to create resource sections uh, where you have a number of related topics organized into a set of pages or into one main page uh, that links to a lot of good supporting information. These types of resource sections can signal your authority to Google but uh, most importantly, they can signal that authority to the user uh, who may be looking for information uh, about an accident or an injury or a situation that they have where they are needing some legal help. Uh, in that case, you know, you're already starting to build your authority with that person. You're already starting to earn their trust, which we all know is key. So let's take a look at a few examples of resource sections. Uh, Seven-ish Law Firm is a client of ours, a personal injury firm in Indianapolis that works on a wide variety of cases. Um, one particular area where they have built out a resource section is on motorcycle accidents. That's what you're seeing here. Paul Julius is going to get uh, a bit more into detail on resource sections in the conversion rate optimization portion of our webinar. But briefly, we can see here that there, there are a lot of options for a user who hits this site. There's a lot of information uh, and, and authority being shown here. There are a good number of signals to people who visit this page that this firm is knowledgeable on the subject, they're trustworthy, and they would be able to represent them well in, in a case like this. Another example here, um, this time is Charles Ullman um, and Associates. They are a Raleigh, North Carolina firm, also one of our clients. This page contains over 30 links to other informative pages on the firm's site uh, about relevant family law topics. Uh, it has an attractive, well-organized design, and again, great for search engine visibility and for user experience. Uh, one last example of a resource section here. Uh, this is from Levitt, Yamani, and Soldner, who practice in Honolulu. Uh, again, great information and utility for users of the site, this time on spinal cord and traumatic brain injuries. Um, you know, key for search engines and, of course, for that, that user experience, which is, is crucial. So if your firm develops great content for the site, that's really only half the battle on the content front. 
all of that great content on your site will definitely help with organic search, um, making your site more likely to appear in the Google search results and results on other search engines. But there's another way that your competition might be getting the upper hand with regards to content, and that is they get their information and their messages to the market more effectively. Um, you have to get your content, or at the very least your content promotion, in the right places for people to see it and draw value on it. And what is the right place? It's really wherever your target market hangs out online. And we see Ashley here. She's a member of our outreach team. And she tells us the, the user, you know, the visitor, the information gatherer, the prospective client, hopefully, uh, has to be the number one consideration uh, in, in whatever you're doing. And that goes for content as well as content promotion. So your content uh, should be personalized, targeted, and optimized. So what are we saying here? We're saying try to get inside your prospect's head. Uh, think about who it is that needs this information. What is their situation right now? What do they need to hear? Uh, how can you help them with the words and the resources that are on your website? Um, it needs to be targeted. We're, we're trying to reach people where they are. And when we say where they are, we mean geographically. We mean demographically. We mean emotionally. Uh, providing them with what they need to, to start trusting you, seeing your firm as an authority, uh, you know, but on their terms and where they live. Um, it's targeted also in terms of content promotion. Uh, this means proactively getting your brand and your expertise to your market before they even need your services so they can have that top of mind awareness about your firm. And then when they have a need, you're the first one that they think of. Uh, and then optimized, and of course we mean both technical optimization, uh, titles and tags and things like that, uh, and, and also optimized for the user. So really you want to give your audience your best, and you want to give it to them where they are online. Uh, and that's really the, the content piece and content promotion in sum. So how do you reach your market? Uh, well, you have to determine where they are and you have to determine the most effective and efficient ways to reach them. Uh, you might connect with them on Facebook with a, sort of a fun, lighter, more entertaining uh, content. Uh, maybe they could be on YouTube. Uh, you could show them an inspiring video of a charitable effort or a community involvement that your firm has recently undertook. Um, might be that you reach them through local forums or blogs or your own blog um, if you're addressing community topics. Uh, or other places online. It, it probably depends on your market um, and your target, but wherever they are, that's, that's where you need to be. So our next area where our competition uh, might possibly be beating you uh, online is in the realm of mobile. And uh, John Dameron is a senior marketing strategist here at Consult Webs, and he tells us that mobile continues to become more important in several ways. Mobile search and lead generation, you know, those are the two things we think of first when we think about mobile. But there's also these other things to consider in terms of the mobile experience for clients with, uh, with regards to case management or client payments, uh, communications that you send out. You always have to be thinking about mobile. So we recently posted an article to lawwebmarketing.com in response to an update from Google, which basically says, uh, that a significant change to mobile search is coming. Um, and it's coming soon, actually. Uh, to sum it up, if your site isn't mobile friendly, you'll probably be dropping in mobile search rankings. And we could probably remove the probably from that statement. I think it's, it's uh, pretty clear. And this really makes sense. Uh, if you look at it from Google's perspective, again, Google's in the business of getting people information and experiences that they're looking for. And if your site doesn't look right or read right on their phone, uh, Google is a lot less likely to return it in a mobile search result. Um, you know, that's how Google got to be the, the leader in the industry as they, they think about things like this. So April 21st is the date. Uh, and we have at Consult Webs for quite a while recommended that all sites be created with responsive design from the start. Um, that basically means essentially whatever device a site is viewed on, the display adjusts to make sure that the user has a better view and a better experience. Uh, if your site isn't mobile friendly, you could see a significant reduction in your traffic from mobile devices after this date of, of April 21st, or, or maybe on this date of April 21st. So how do you tell if your site is mobile friendly? Um, well, there are a couple of ways to know. First, when you do a search for your firm or for one of your firm's practice areas, uh, in your listing you might see these mobile friendly tags. Uh, we've highlighted them in yellow here. They won't be yellow on the, the uh, 
the actual display, but, but just so everyone can see what we're talking about. Uh, and this is Google just informing users who are on a mobile device um, which sites they know to be correct uh, for, that, for that device to, to display the site properly. You can also run the Google mobile test, which is listed in the self-assessment resource uh, that we're uh, planning to offer you here at the end of um, the webinar today. So when we talk about desktop versus mobile, um, different devices require different layout for good user experience. On a desktop, we've got room for a larger navigation. We've got more options that we can put in for visitors uh, without having to adjust anything. Uh, and maybe the call to action is different. Um, intent might be slightly different for users on a mobile device. You know, maybe they need some quick advice or maybe they're even approaching the decision point and we want to, uh, to hit them with what they need when they need it. So here's another example of a responsive a design mobile friendly site. Uh, notice that when the site's viewed on a smartphone, as this view shows us uh, right here, it displays a tap to call button, which if, if unfortunately people are uh, using this phone while they're driving or something like that, which we certainly do not recommend, um, but it just makes it easier. They don't have to fumble with copying a phone number and pasting it or, or any of that kind of stuff. They can just tap and it will pull up on their phone to, to call. Uh, directions buttons also, if they're, you know, have an appointment with your firm and they want to get there, this makes it very easy that they can just pull up a directions uh, uh, view. Uh, also, much of the main navigation area at the very top is nested in that menu icon uh, at the top right. It'll drop down on a phone so that users can find relevant sections without you know, having the site display so small as it would if the desktop view was being shown on a smartphone. So here are a few statistics we found on smartinsights.com that show us just how important responsive design is and your consideration about the mobile experience. Web searchers are using all kinds of devices these days and responsive design can make sure that they're getting the best experience for whatever device they're on. Um, an article on this same website actually mentions that globally mobile users of the internet actually exceed desktop users now. Uh, that crossover happened in 2014. So we all know how important mobile search is. And this data shows that search is the most common way that people will get started when looking for information with a mobile device online. So if they search on mobile, you want to be sure your site is offering them a good experience and you can start building that relationship with them really no matter where they are. Um, also a quick reminder, you want to be sure that your site isn't going to be hurt in mobile rankings after April 21st. Um, if your competition uh, you know, has a mobile friendly site and they've been more thoughtful about all of this, this is certainly a way that they could be edging you out uh, for clients. So moving on to our next topic, let me invite Grant Brott, our team's lead marketing consultant and an expert on local search. Uh, to talk you through some of the ways that you can optimize your site and your campaigns for local. Grant? Thanks, Mike. So we'll jump right in. Um, I'm going to hit on three different points around local optimization that are uh, kind of key right now with, in the eyes of Google. Um, the first thing is, is it's going to be very clear who is doing business listings and setting up local optimization and who isn't. Um, this next slide here, you can see Firm A has only filled out about 36% of the listings that are available. Uh, and this is based off of a list of uh, kind of the uh, top 12 uh, listings that are out there versus Firm B, who has got 87% of them filled out. Um, it makes a big difference whether you have all the key listings filled out, like uh, Avvo, Yelp, Google, uh, being places, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of them, um, and they're all very critical. Uh, having them all filled out uh, gives you a, a more complete uh, profile online. Um, with those listings, consistency matters. So you can't have different versions of your name, um, the name, address, and phone number across all those different listings. You want to have one solid set of data that you're using for them all. Uh, with uh, the legal industry, it's common for you know partners to come and go and the names of firms to change. And with that comes a lot of inconsistency in your listings. And that's a big problem for uh, the legal industry uh, as a whole. Um, this is an example of a citation. So it's the 
official business name, which ideally is whatever you have on your business license, um, the address, so 123 Main Street with the suite, if you're in a suite, uh, city, state, zip code, and then the phone number. Um, the phone number here is a branded number, um, and I'll come back to that in just a second. You can see here we've overlaid a different version of that same information. So in this case, the LLC is missing, um, the suite number is not in there, and now we have the local office number. Ideally, what you want for your citation and when, when these are being done uh, is you want to verify the business name, which version you're going to use across the board. Uh, you want to get the address worked out. So if you're in a suite, make sure you list the suite number. Um, the city, state, zip, and then your phone number is critical. Uh, Google requires it to be a unique phone number. Uh, they don't want 1-800 numbers, and they don't want call tracking numbers in there. So the best bet is to have a local landline phone that is in that office, and that's your local, your main office line. Um, if you're using 800 numbers and all this stuff, um, it creates a lot of inconsistency and throws the numbers all over the place. So for creating the business list and listings, we want one set of information that's put out there amongst all the different listings, and that way we maintain that consistency. It's one of the top factors for local search. Um, the next thing with the listings is going to be the star rating. Uh, if you've gotten Google reviews and you have your star rating, uh, you're going to pull traffic from your competitors. Uh, if you don't have that star rating, you're not going to pull traffic from your competitors. You can see here, uh, Joy Law Firm, and then you've got Scott Kegel and David Aylor down at the bottom. Uh, the top one's got 91 reviews, then you've got six reviews down at the bottom and 40 reviews. All three of those ones have star ratings. So when you're looking at this, which listing grabs your attention? Which listing are you going to click on? The majority of people are going to go to the one with 91 reviews and see what people are saying. Then they're going to go to the one with 40 reviews and see what they're saying. And if they're going to multiple different firms to try and you know find who they're going to go with, those are going to be the top two that are going to get traffic from this set of uh, results and then the one with six reviews. But the ones that don't have the star rating yet are losing out because their listing doesn't stand out like the other ones do. Um, so you can see here, you know, the reviews, to get your star rating, the magic number is five. You get five Google reviews, and then your star rating appears in the search results. So the, the first step is to get those five good reviews on there. Um, beyond that, everything else is just beneficial. You can kind of look through the results. Like in this case, you've got 91 reviews and 40 reviews. So the, the top two players here have a lot of reviews and are doing ongoing regular work to gain reviews. So to be on the same playing field with them, you're going to add, you know, some of these other firms that don't have any or they only have four or six reviews. To be able to grab the same attention, you're going to have to work more to get more reviews now um, versus these two firms who have probably been doing this for over a year now because if they're getting, you know, three or four reviews a month over time, that's how they get to have this many. Uh, the other aspect and the last thing I'm going to touch on here is uh, the campaign itself. Competitors that are running a uh, heavy organic and local campaign in conjunction with a paid campaign are going to take up more space in the search results. It's a multi-channel approach. And you can see this here with the Joy Law Firm. Um, they've got the organic listing there, and then they've got the local listing. Uh, if they were running uh, paid search for this term, they could potentially be taking up one of those top three ad spots too. So in hitting all three of those areas, you're knocking competition out. So if you're in all three of those areas, you're a step above somebody who's only got a local listing or only the organic or maybe they're only running the ads. Um, by doing all three, you're grabbing more traffic, you're taking up more space, you're pushing other people out. So if your competition is doing that and you're not, you're losing out in that respect because they're taking up more, more real estate on that page for those search terms. Um, next up, I'm going to hand this off to uh, Paul Julius, who is our PPC expert. Uh, he does a lot of the conversion rate optimization stuff and uh, he'll go into uh, the different things on page that will affect people coming through to you as a lead. So Paul, go ahead and take it away. 
Thanks, Grant. Um, all right, let's get to it. So we talked a lot about content and local and how these different things um, should be put together and how you can meet different needs. And here we're going to talk about how firms are being more cognizant of their data and how people are using their information and getting to their site and actually finding them at different spots. Um, and if we look at a typical search process, it's kind of this inverted pyramid. Hey. It's this inverted pyramid of, you know, at the beginning they say, what happened to me? And what can I do about it? And who can help? And as you go down this funnel, it's going to get more competitive and it's going to be more difficult to separate yourself. And what people are realizing is that at different levels, um, people want different information. So if you're at the beginning of this, you know, and maybe you're trying to find out more about what happened to you, um, you may not even be in the frame of mind that you need a lawyer yet, but you can start to reach people there and start to make a point um, and get your name into their head. So let's go through a typical situation. Here's this poor woman had a car accident. She's going to take out her mobile phone and do a Google search. I was just in a car accident. What do I do? These are the results she's going to see. And now which sites are going to get that click? Which are the ones that are going to get her attention right now? And this is what we're trying to optimize for. Um, and you can see there's some in here, you know, people may have a bias. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to click on a State Farm one or a GEICO one um, because that's going to tell me what the insurance company wants me to do after a car accident. I want to know what's the best advice, what's the best uh, information. I'm just going to look for the ones that provide value, okay? You got to get people where they want to go, okay? And this is important. When someone does a search, people are starting to realize that you can start to approach these searches and optimize for these behaviors and say, okay, well, rather than just have someone put in a search that says, geez, um, I was in a car accident, I don't know what to do, or what are the top five mistakes people make after having a car accident, and just letting Google do it, they're starting to realize that they can get people at the top of that funnel and guide them to a resource somewhere on their site so they can start to get those people who have intent and have an interest um, to, to get to their site. And the most successful firms online optimize data, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, what you need to do is realize, are your users coming in off of Facebook or a blog? Are they coming in mobile or desktop? Are they men or women? All these different things... Um, are going to approach, are going to make a difference in what kind of information you guide them to. Um, and, you know, giving your user the best experience and clearest path to conversion based on how they prefer to interact with your site um, can make a really big difference in conversion rate. Okay? So we're going to take a look at two sites here. On the left, um, they're both pretty typical. Um, and they may even contain similar information, but it's all about how we're presenting this. So on the left, they may have the same, you know, information. There may be good stuff, but it's not presented in a way that makes it easy for me to find. Um, and I want to go to the next slide here. We've got a lot of things pointed out, but I want to go down to the bottom of the page there where it says sending a resource home with the user. Now down here, we have a report for people who maybe want to look at it on an e-reader uh, or an iPad, whatever. There's videos for people who maybe um, are more likely to watch a video. FAQs. Um, these are huge sources and, and excellent ways to relate to people because you have questions that maybe, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some kind of information, and here it is. Um, and then there's blog posts, which is going to give you people who are looking for latest information, maybe something they can share. Um, so these are kind of all those different resources that Mike talked about earlier. Um, you can guide people to them and make them available um, and meet those different search needs. Um, catch people from the top of the funnel once they start to look and say, okay, well, um, I was in a car accident and I'm not too sure if the insurance company is going to cover this. Um, you can have an FAQ that addresses that. So there's different ways you can do that and different ways you can present that. Um, 
Real quick, because I know this is a lot, and I know I'm at the end here. Um, when people talk about conversion optimizing, there's all these other things that come into it. And, and I pointed out some of them here in this slide where you see the um, contact form above the fold. Uh, the contact form is simple. You know, there's immediate call to action. One point I want to make is that, you know, you can go and Google these things, and there's thousands of blog posts about, you know, change your, change your call to action to a different color, and you'll increase your conversion rate. It's important to understand how users are using your site before you start to make these changes. Um, so, for example, if 70% of the people are coming to your site, um, like that woman in the car accident did, off a mobile phone, um, making changes to your contact form may not make much of a difference. Um, you're you're going to want to, you know, be cognizant of, of the, the, your analytics and the data and make decisions on optimizing based on that. Because um, otherwise, you know, you're just going to say, well, let's um, move this over here and hope it works. And, you know, I don't think hope is a, is a very good foundation to build a marketing strategy on. So... Um, I know that's a lot of information. I'm going to pass it back to Mike Zomer to kind of wrap us up here, and we'll open it up for some questions. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul, and, and thanks, Grant, for the, uh, the coverage on the local topics, too. Uh, all, all really good stuff. So really everything we've discussed today has to do with strategy and uh, execution of that strategy. So being mindful about creating valuable information, uh, helpful content, getting your message to your audience where they live, uh, optimizing for local search performance, and moving prospects through this funnel to, to convert and to contact your firm. Um, and these are just some of the ways that you can get the upper hand on your competition online. Um, by doing these things more effectively than your competitors, your firm can be the one who's getting that high value case from a potential client's internet search. Uh, again, these are just some of the element, elements of a fruitful online campaign uh, and an effective website. Victoria is going to give you all a link. I believe she's going to paste it in our, our chat window here um, where you can get the resource we've been talking about, and then we'll plan to take some questions uh, after that. Victoria? Right. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, as Mike said, if you go to um, consultweb.com slash assessment, there you'll be able to download the resource we prepared for you, which as Mike said, is basically a self-assessment for you to go through, answer several points about your web marketing strategy, um, and we, we hope that will be of value. I just pasted a link in the chat window. It's also on the screen here. It should be easy to navigate to. Um, the download will be followed up by an additional email just with if you have additional questions or further needs. Um, we'll be having an email follow-up in a couple of days or so.